a tragedy. But our culture is a little different from the culture of the time of Jesus and the prophet Elijah. In our culture, when someone becomes a widow or a widower, they're not abandoned. Our society has a way of taking care of them. We have things like survivor benefits, where the pension carries on from the deceased spouse, or social security, or life insurance. And so widows and widowers today, while of course heartbroken, are economically kind of taken care of by our society and by the way we choose to live today. But in the time of Jesus and in the time of the prophet, women didn't have property. They weren't allowed to own anything. So when a woman's husband died, she was relying on either her children, her son or sons, or brothers or brother-in-laws. And so it's important to understand when these widows lose their son, they don't just lose their son, but they lose their economic viability. They have no way to own property, and they have no one to take care of them who does own property. They're absolutely, completely destitute. They have nothing, nothing in the world. So not only are they heartbroken that their husbands and their sons have died, but they now are completely exposed to society. They only have the people around them to take care of them. That's why the scriptures and the ancient Israelites were always taught they had to take care of the widow because the widow was considered the person least able to take care of themselves, the most vulnerable, the person without a voice. And that's what we are taught as Christians, that we are responsible to take care of those in our society who are most vulnerable who have no voice. It's up to us to speak out against things that are wrong in the world today for those who cannot take care of themselves, for those who have no voice. It doesn't matter who they are. We are responsible as Christians to speak out on their behalf. That's what today's message is all about, giving a voice to those who have no voice. But a couple other things happen that I think are really important to bring up to you. The first is, is Jesus looks upon this woman with compassion. Notice in most of his healings, he looks for faith. But today, he takes compassion and he weeps for this woman. He sees her and his heart breaks for her. So he doesn't do the healing because she has faith. He does it because he has compassion. And I think the message for us is really simple. We are called not to respond to people because they have faith, but because we have faith. We don't do ministry in the church because we do it for Catholics. We do it because we're Catholic. We don't ask people what their religion is, what their denomination is. It's our responsibility to help everyone, regardless of their faith, their color, their creed, their nationality. It has no bearing. Jesus saw a person, and he asked us to see other people, not to see the color of their skin, not to see their religion, not to see their nationality, but to see a human being made in the image of God and to have compassion and to reach out and to help them. And the last thing is kind of interesting. Notice that in the gospel, Jesus meets up with someone. Where does he meet up with them? He meets up with them at a gate. That gate has a significance because in the cities of Jerusalem, in the cities of Nazareth, and in the cities of Israel, the gate meant that they were leaving the living, that this gate kept them safe. Everyone in that city was safe, and when you left the gate, you were no longer safe. You were going out to the cemetery. I mean, why did they bury people so quickly within like 24 hours? Well, because Dead people decompose, and they're a hazard for disease. And in those days, they didn't have embalming, and they didn't have a way to preserve the body. So they quickly took the body out to be buried. And so they're meeting and leaving the city. This group is leaving, and they're mourning and weeping. They're brokenhearted. And there's this other group coming into the city, coming in, bringing life, bringing happiness and joy. And what happens when the sorrow and the mourning Meet the joy of Jesus Christ. Well, where Jesus is, life abounds. 
And so Jesus restores this child's life. Because wherever Jesus is, there can be no sorrow. There can be no sadness. We are called to be a people of joy. Despite the hardships of this world, we are called to meet the struggles with hope, with the hope that God is with us in all of our lives. Trust that God is with you today. Trust that he is with you all this week and that the joy that God wants you to have is not the joy of this world, but the joy that he can give you. Trust that God will give you that joy, give you that hope, so that when you meet people this week and the rest of your lives, you can be that message of hope and joy for the world. And I want to take a moment to introduce a, a new member of our staff here at St. Gregory the Great. Brian Metcalf is going to be the uh, head of the new evangelization. He just wants to give a few words. Um, so, Brian, please come forward. Thank you, Father. My name is Brian Metcalf, and I am very honored to be the director of new evangelization here at St. Gregory the Great. Um, I've been letting everybody in on a secret, but at, with this being the seventh mass of the weekend, I think by now the secret's out. I'm not actually from Buffalo. I am from California. And if right now you're wondering why somebody would ever leave California, especially the beautiful Napa Valley for western New York, I'll be happy to tell you just as soon as I figure that out for myself. Uh, I've been in Buffalo about 18 months now. I do love it here. I've met some wonderful people, and that's part of why I'm very excited to be joining this parish staff and in this ministry. What is the new evangelization? Ultimately, it's about three things. First of all, I'm here to help in any way that I can to strengthen the faith of our parish as it is, especially the people who are already here every single week. The second step is to reach out to those who maybe are going through the motions or who are starting to fall away from the faith and help renew and reinvigorate their faith so that they can join us in reaching out to those who are completely lost, those who have left the church, those who have never even entered the church, and guide them home, help them to understand the love that Christ has for them as an individual. But this isn't simply my mission. This is our mission. It is upon each and every one of us as Catholics and as members of St. Gregory the Great to reach out to one another, to reach out to those who are lost, and to bring them home. We are all under the great commission given to us by Christ before he ascended to go make disciples of all the nations. So I invite all of you to join me in this mission. First of all, I invite you to read my introduction letter in this week's bulletin. And if you have any questions about the new evangelization, any questions about the faith, any questions about how you can get involved or how you can reach out to someone, whether it's in your family or a complete stranger, don't hesitate to ask. My contact information is in there. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 